For a lot of Americans, the desert must seem to be one more piece of real estate to build towns and cities on. But after meeting Lauren, I began to see why you need to have a healthy respect for it and for the creatures who live in it. I was driving through the Sonoran Desert, which is seriously threatened by unscrupulous developers. Some people will go to amazing lengths to preserve it, like the man I'd heard of who lived the life of a hermit, totally isolated from 20th century America. I was expecting a half-crazed weirdo. The reality is somewhat different. This is Jeffrey Platt's Desert Recluse. From a secret address somewhere in Arizona, Jeffrey conducts an unpopular campaign to clean up and preserve the desert. When I finally tracked him down, there was something oddly familiar about his accent. 25 years ago, last September, I yeah. emigrated to the States on a whim. All my life I spent swilling pints of beer up to that point. My love of the natural world began many years ago in England. When I was a, a lad, I used to yeah. roam the woods regularly. And, and as I grew into teenage, then I, sort of, I then went into the pubs and forgot all that. And then there was a re-emergence in later life of a love for the natural world, which probably established itself around the age of 34, 35, and then became a deep and abiding love affair that has lasted ever since. Like all the best recluses, Jeffrey hoards all he owns in his cabin with just enough room to pick up a pen and fight the good fight. At this point of my life, after 15 years of uh, defending the natural world, I refer to myself as a desert advocate. My essential role is to raise the consciousness level by currying favor with media in order to, to bring the light directly onto the problem. Jeffrey's a man of few needs, no mod cons, a pile of old phone books, his winter fuel, and scorpions and rattlesnakes, his only company. Initially, I had the, the mild phobia that seems to inflict everybody about snakes and scorpions and all other creatures not so beautiful. And uh, as I grew to know them and have them visit me, I realized that they were not the beasts and uh, malicious creatures that they're made out to be in most uh, moving pictures. Yeah. And that, in fact, uh, the rattlesnake, for example, is a very gentlemanly fellow. He lets you know he's around and he merely rattles to advise you to stay away and if you stay away and don't mess with him you'll never get bitten. Most of the people that are bitten, and there aren't many, are those that tease them, fool with them or shoot them or try to inflict molestation upon them. It says perhaps a lot about your gentlemanliness that you regard a rattlesnake as gentlemanly. That's, that's well, very they're, nice. They're very nice creatures. If we had time I could show you that. I, 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 I'll take it as read for the moment. But what about scorpions specifically? I have gone through various phases. I used to kill them, yeah. and now my uh, reverence for life uh, has increased a little bit, and now I relocate them. I was actually stung last summer yeah. in bed by one, and the, the great test of my reverence for life was whether I should kill it or move it outside, and I'm happy to say I moved it outside after. That is a test. Would you have the same attitude to a tapeworm? <laughs> You are actually a very unlikely looking person to be living in the desert. You're clean shaven, neatly hair brushed, and your shirt is iron. I mean, how, how do you make all that happen out here in the wilderness? All, all these things can be done without what we consider the necessary utilities. It's a 19th century way of living, and of course they got on very well and also had clean clothes. Jeffrey Platt, he was off on a solitary journey into the desert in true Mad Dogs and Englishmen style. Technically, of course, he was one of the infamous dropouts of the 60s, but all credit to him for finding some new purpose to his life. In his way, Jeffrey's got more in common with the lone wolf stalking the desert than with the man who creates a golf course slap in the middle of the wilderness, and a grass one at that. Ah oh, well, that's progress. Or rather, it's American progress, which is sometimes completely different. The trouble, I suspect, is that people like Jeffrey Platts are fighting a losing battle. These days, suburbia is spreading out into the desert at an alarming rate. Wherever you look, there's some new spread, a new ranch, or a new holiday home, 
built for some city slicker from Boston or Philadelphia and only used for a couple of months a year. It's a bit like North Wales, really, only without the rain and without the Welsh. Still, it could be worse. It could be skyscrapers and burger stands. And at least you're safe in the knowledge that if the stresses and strains of living in the desert get too much, help is at hand.